In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Analytics custom reports to align Google Analytics with your actual business needs so that instead of being just something that you poke around in and it's full of numbers, it actually contains the information that you want all in one place. It's part two of a, a series of videos. In the first one, I showed you how to customize dashboards. But in this example, this video, I'm going to show you how to go much further than that and create a really powerful custom report. In order to do this, I have to choose a theme for my business goal, uh, my business need. And in this instance, I'm going to choose something that's fairly universally applicable, which is the subject of getting new customers. And the definition that I, of getting this process that I rather like is one from a guy called John Jantz, who run, blogs about this subject at uh, a blog called ducttapemarketing.com. And his definition of getting new customers, the process of getting new customers, is getting people who have a need to know, like, and trust you. So in the case of Google Analytics, what I'm going to use as my example is the people who are coming to your site via generic search. Now, by generic, I mean searches where they're not using any of your brand keywords. So this is one way of identifying a segment, I think, who can be described as people who have a need because they're searching for it, but they don't know your brand yet because they won't use any brand keywords. But here they are. They've arrived at your site. So I think it's fair to say that they're in the very early stages of the buying journey. Typically, people research stuff like this over several visits, and then ultimately, if they're going to convert and buy from you, they will probably turn up on a brand search. But at this point, we're looking at the early stages in that journey, the people who have a need, who are just getting to know your brand, and we want to know to what extent we can get them to like and trust us, and how could you measure that in Google Analytics. So I'm going to show you how to make a customized report for analyzing exactly that. Here we go. This is an example of a custom report. They live in their own tab within Google Analytics. Um, as you can see, it's highlighted there. Now, because they are a way of condensing an awful lot of information into a single place, the navigation structure for them is quite complicated. So I'll just talk you through, get, sort of get you a bit of orientation here. The first concept to be aware of are these things called tabs. In this example, I've set up four. Uh, you could have just one. I, I'm not sure what the actual maximum limit for these are. What the tabs refer to is the information which appears the within the table itself down here. Not the numbers, if I hope my cursor is showing, but the actual, uh, what Google will call the dimension, I think, uh, the list of items that are being reported on. The naming convention that I'm using here is I'm naming it according to each tab, according to what shows at the top level uh, there and what happens if you drill down. Since we're interested in search, I'm starting with my first tab. It's going to show a list of keywords. And then if you click into the keyword and drill down to the next level, it'll show the landing page. If you see the next item along from that, I'm showing products. And then you drill down into that to get see the keyword. We go along again. No, my cursor's disappeared. Uh, you see landing page and then keyword. And in the final one, we're making a connection between the landing page and the product. Um, so really what I'm trying to get across here is an example. I'm not suggesting you would actually follow this particular scheme. Indeed, in the video I'll link to at the end, I'm showing you how you might devise a different structure. Um, but the point I'm making there is that I think it's useful to have a naming system that uh, helps you understand what's going to appear in each tab. Now, these are extremely dense reports, so there's actually another layer of navigation within each of these tabs. So within each tab, and the naming of the tab, the tab dictates what the items are that are going to appear in the list. There's another concept called metric groups, which refers to how you can group the numbers that are going to appear in the column. So in exa this example here, I've got two of these. One is called summary by keyword, um, which is just showing basically the summary level of, of information. And to the right of that, there's one called engagement, which is going to show a different set of numbers. Now, it's going to be, become easier to understand if I just talk you through 
this series of reports. So on the one that we've got on the screen at the moment, we have a list of keywords. And then the metrics that are appearing, which are showing in the sort of scorecard area at the top. And if you click on the different areas there, it'll change what's showing in the chart. And these are the same numbers that are appearing in the columns of the report itself, of the table. And so I'm showing a fairly standard set of metrics for keywords, which is visits, bounce rate, conversion rate, transactions, and revenue. But this isn't just any old um, list of keywords, because there's one other hidden secret behind this, which is that custom reports can also be filtered so that they just show specific sets of, uh, of, of, of visits. So in this case, all the information in this report has already been filtered so that it just shows visits that are from search. And what's more, it's also just showing visits where the keyword used in the search does not include any of your brand keywords. And I'll, I'll give you a link at the end of the presentation to where you can understand how to work with brand keywords. So there's the top level view of it. And then if you clicked into any of those keywords, you would then be able to drill down in this instance to see which landing page that keyword brought visits to. It might be one or it might be indeed several. Now if we go back up to the top level and along to the next set of metrics, the next uh, metric group, we're still in the same tab. What we see now is a different set of metrics showing. What we have now in the scorecard and in the table are visits and bounce rate as before. I always suggest having visits because other in the first column because the trick here is uh, the default view will sort according to whatever's in the first column. So if you don't have that and you just had bounce rate, it would start by showing you all your really high bouncing pages, even if they were ones which hardly got any visits at all. So having something like visits or revenue is always a good idea because it focuses is the attention on what matters. But what I've got now is a series of micro conversion goals. What I've done is I've set up GA goals for things which will help us understand to what extent these people are getting to like and trust us. So the bounce rate is that fairly binary black or white. Did they like us at all and stick around or did they not like us and just bounce, disappear off the site without even clicking anything? The next one I've got along is a goal which is set up uh, to measure engagement. It's saying that they viewed more than three pages. Uh, you could you know, you choose something else and quant number that's appropriate to your site. I just chose three as a fairly arbitrary thing. So we're saying they saw at least four pages here. The next one I've got is I've set up another of these goals to matching a, a pattern which is the URL of all the product pages on this site. So we're saying these people, this percentage of people, actually got as far as seeing a product page. So that's another indication that they're an interested customer. Beyond that, I've then added the two sort of e-commerce related goals, or two of them, two of the potential ones. One is adding to basket and the other is the final conversion rate for completing the checkout. So what you have there is some indication for each of those keywords of the degree to which that keyword was bringing people to the site who liked us and trusted us enough indeed in, the in, in some instances with generic search this may happen to actually buy there and then but I think you'd be more likely to see people engaging with the site by seeing a few more pages, looking at a product page perhaps, or indeed adding to basket, because remember quite a lot of people do that as a way of saving something for future reference. Now let's move on to the next tab. In some instances, uh, with even with generic search, people will arrive and will buy there and then. It may be if you've got a low value item or something very particular, people will buy. So it would be very interesting to see which products you have sold as a result of generic search and what keywords brought people to your site to buy them. So in this tab, I haven't used a metric group because with products, to be honest, all we're really interested in, I think, is the quantity and revenue. So we see a list of products and then you drill down to see which keywords sold about each of those products. And indeed, of course, it may well be several different ones. Let's go back up to the, along to the next tab which is landing page and keyword. If we're talking about this type of search visit, obviously we're hugely interested in which pages are attracting visits for these uh, particular customers. So in this instance, we're looking at a list of the pages, the landing pages or entrance pages where people arrive at the site. And in this instance, I think, again, metric group, I really just want to see straight into the uh, 
engagement metrics. So I'm very interested in this instance in the bounce rate, so I can compare them all. I'm very interested in the number of people who landed on that page and were sufficiently interested by what they saw on it to see several other pages. And indeed, I'm very interested if they saw a product or added it to basket or even completed the checkout. One tip about this point is whenever you're using this type of report, do have a look in that uh, view drop-down menu there because it's really handy to switch this over to show conversion view for some of these metrics to get an idea when you're talking about these conversion rates, bounce rates and so on, is to get a, it's a, the comparison view sorry, the comparison view, get the name right, is a wonderful, wonderful way of visualizing the relative performance of different pages or keywords in this type of context. As I say, on this view tab, we're looking at the entrance page, and then for each entrance page, you then drill down into it, and it shows you the keywords that brought people to that entrance page, and again, what those engagement goals were. Finally, I'm showing an example where we're mixing landing page and product. So again, we're talking mostly about quantity and revenue. So we've got pages where people entered the site, click into each one of them, and if they happen to buy something, as you can tell by the quantity and revenue figures, let's see what the products they bought ultimately were. Now that, you see, the type of way you might use that might be more appropriate to something like email, where you're actually targeting people at a site, at a page, and you might discover you're landing them on a category page, for example. That would be very, very typical. And seeing you think you're promoting one product, but they ultimately buy something else. Or indeed, category pages frequently attract um, visits from generic search because they're so rich in uh, products and items. So it may well be that the search brings people to a certain page for whatever reason, but ultimately it turns out they're looking for something slightly different. So work, having access to this kind of information is really, really powerful because who knows, perhaps you should be taking the products that people bought from the, having landed on one particular page where that product isn't displayed, put it on that page because obviously if some people came to that page you know, again, you need to be sure that you're looking at significantly large numbers, but if there's an indication that people who come to that page are actually looking for something else and then buying it, well then probably it's a reasonable assumption to say that a percentage of the people who came to that page also looking for something on that keyword didn't have the time or indication, weren't sufficiently engaged to actually kick around and find that you do actually sell it after all. So making it more prominent on that page, if that's where people are coming to, is a very, very, very sensible move. So what I've done there, I hope, is given you some insight into the way that you can align Google Analytics to very, very specific narrow targets within your business and make one report which contains a huge wealth of information about that subject and allows you to sort of slice and dice it and mix and match it in ways which actually allow you to get very clear insights as to what's going on. In this video, I'm not going to take all the time to show you how to build one of these. Uh, what I'll do is on the next slide, here, here we are, I'll give you a link down at uh, the bottom there to a, another video that's uh, up on YouTube, which is about how to build one of these custom reports. In that example, I'm talking about emails. Now, that's a very, very interesting example as well, because there you might have somebody, a team or somebody within your organization who specifically handles emails and has very precise control over what appears in the emails. Well, this gives them a very precise vision of what exactly people did if they clicked through from those emails. To what extent did they engage? To what extent did they actually end up buying something? In, in that instance, obviously, you'd want the conversion metrics very, very prominently because there'd be a strong likelihood that people will be buying. Um, as you can see, uh, I make videos about this. I also, of course, write about it. I blog about it. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Facebook, the full works. Take a look at my blog. That's the prominent URL up there, cxfocus.com. Or if you want to check me out on any of the other social networks, the best place to do that at the moment, I guess, is via my profile on Google+. Google+. If you want to get in touch, all the email details are there. They're fairly easy to find on any of those sites. I'd love to help you out with this. Thank you.